So uh, I'm headed out of the office to go and uh, get myself a uh, deep tissue massage. I've never done anything like that before, but uh, apparently it's good stuff. <laughs> think I have ever felt this calm or good and I've been to lots of people who call themselves doctors healers whatever and you know say what you want about massage therapy and whether it's healing or medicine or whatever but aren't you supposed to feel great well right now I feel fantastic and so you should check this person out <laughs> One of the major benefits of uh, working at PSU is that when I need to go get stuff done for my consulting work, like you know, print out a bunch of certificates and training materials, I just head on over to the library and get it done. So I got what I needed and I'm headed out to uh, try and surprise Lacey. I don't get to see or spend time with Lacey as much as I want to and I love her so much and so you know whenever I can fit in something like this it's always nice. Alright so I'm finished with work now I'm headed to the school somehow I gotta figure out how to eat uh, somewhere between now and getting to the school, setting up the presentation, giving the presentation, then going home. It's gonna be a late night because I gotta get ready for tomorrow's presentation, which is happening in the morning. <sighs> and that's actually how Jane Nelson starts the book of Positive Discipline, chapter one. She said, where did we get this strange idea that in order for children to do well, we need to make them feel bad? Where did we get that idea? Wow. So I just got done with this one school that I'm working with and I am so excited that I'm working with this school. I get to go work with them for the next month and um, I can tell this is a very special place. They've got something really special going on with their culture and I can't wait to see what they come up with. I think I might, I think I'm like 70% sure I can convince them to get on the vlog next week. So something that really struck me about the center that I was working at today is that the director said it doesn't matter who the child is or who the family is, and especially if they've been turned away, this school will take them. And it's always striking to me how it's uh, even like a part of certain school's script to be able to say, um, you know, uh, for children with special needs, uh, we recognize that our school may not be the right fit. So then parents go through this school shuffle where uh, they're having to search for schools and staff who will support their child. And uh, it becomes this additional thing that a parent has to deal with of navigating school systems in addition to um, anything else another parent might have to do. So what I just love about this school is that right off the bat, as a part of their values, one of the first things that they wanted to let me know is that, you know, their directors really do believe in inclusion. No matter what, they won't turn away children, even when the work gets hard. Uh, they mentioned that it was hard and, and that it's been hard and it continues to be difficult, but it's something that is part of their inherent value. So they're not asking themselves, can we do this? Should we do this? They're saying we're doing it and the how part of it is gonna be something that they iterate on, something that they improve as they go. 
but they know that it's a part of their school. And I love that. Here's the other thing. Now, I know that I'm not driving right now, right? So, which means somebody is driving me and I'm not, I'm not like a celebrity with like a professional driver, it's, it's Lacey. And she adamantly does not want to be in the vlog. Now, if I just get her like arm, okay, if I get her arm, then slowly, slowly people will piece together what she might look like. So many times children come to us with a question, something that's difficult or whatever, and they say, how does this work? What is that? What is that? And we answer with certainty. That's, that's what we do. We answer, well, that's a water fountain. What does it do? It, uh, water comes out of it. Uh, why? Well, sometimes you're thirsty. Uh, how does it work? Well, there's like plumbing and the water and then there's like a system thing down. You're talking, you're speaking with certainty even when you're not certain, right? You're, you're explaining something that you don't understand, right? It's, I, did, I love that story because it's a true story. It's like something I did. Right? If we can't predict what the future is and it's not about teaching content, right? And I'm teaching processes, is part of it is teaching children to ask good questions. I'm teaching children to ask good question all the time. We call it the strong image of the child. A strong image of the child, right? As opposed to the prevailing image of the child as a nuisance, weak, needy, annoying, right? That's how generally a lot of people talk about children, right? One time I was on a bus, I had seven kids, you know, I had one other teacher with me, we were on the bus, and one person comes up to me and he says, it's like herding cats, right? And you know, most people, are like, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that's so funny. I responded with, they're not cats, they're children, right? And so I, you know, I, def I, def I was like, I was like, that's rude. Don't talk about kids like that when they're right there, right? Don't talk about, ch don't dismiss children. But so many times, but that, it's almost like that's acceptable behavior, right? That's acceptable behavior to talk about children in this dismissive, rude way. Lacey and I decided to stop by my brother and Rachel's house, Rachel's my brother's wife, to visit my two nieces. Go. Okay, tell me. What do you get when you come? A poodle. A rooster and a dog. I don't know what. A cockle poodle do. 